Amen. Very good. Uh, so yeah, um, the message today specifically is going to uh, discuss the new year because uh, if you didn't know, uh, 2021 is almost over. Can you believe that? Is that insane or what? Like it's, yeah, I can't believe that we're about to be in 2022. Uh, I saw like a meme that says 2022 is pronounced 2022. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh my goodness. So driving the fear. No, sir. No, thank you. Yeah, you're terrified now, huh? No, everything's okay. We're gonna be fine. Uh, yeah, processing. He's like, that was a bad joke, Ricky. Um, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about the new year though. Um, with the new year come a lot of different things. You know what I'm saying? It's a it's a new opportunity, which is a great time as we get closer to uh, the 31st and the first of the year. Um, a lot of people are in a space where they're excited for what's next. Um, I'm very much that person. I love when when seasons when things change. I love new seasons. I love experiencing new things. I kind of I think it's kind of built into our nature as human beings is we're we're constantly ready or looking for the next thing. Um, I know t- in today's age that's that's a very real thing. Is we're always ready to, to move forward to what's next and excited about what's next and we and we want that we desire that and that's exactly what the new year brings we've got the resolutions we've got the gym memberships coming up you know what I mean the new diets we've got all these new things me not a gym membership okay maybe do a couple more push-ups a day or something like that <laughs> one is what I mean by a couple more um so, uh, but we've got, we, we want newness, you know, we, we, the new year brings in an idea and, and a motivation to change for the better. We want life to look different than it was this last year, than it is right now. And that's a good thing. Um, I think there should always be a desire to, to go forward, uh, to improve. There's always room for improvement. Amen. Uh, and so that's, it's something that we want and that we should look forward to. Uh, however, if we're being really honest today, I would say one of the things, I mean, I, I struggle with this and I think as human beings, we all kind of struggle with this is when it comes to the new year and setting resolutions and, and seeking change and having desire for it, we're not that great at it. You know, we, we set these plans and we come up with this idea of like, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get better at this. My life's going to look like this. I'm going to have a 20 pack by March. You know what I mean? It's like, whatever it's going to be, things are going to change. And what happens is we get in and that, uh, the hype, if you will, the, uh, the, ex- the, the excitement that we had, um, it kind of fades away. It, it goes away and, and real life comes in, things happen. And what we find ourselves in is this loop. We find ourselves in this loop about every, every new year where we go, things are going to change, we kind of get stuck, life gets hard, and we find ourselves back in the place that we were when we were setting the goal, saying this should change, this needs to look, have, look better. Have you ever found yourself in that spot, in that loop, where things don't go the way you had planned, when things don't change, when, when you weren't able to succeed in the goals you had set for yourself? It's a very real place, right? It's a very real place that we constantly find ourselves in where we end back up where we were when we wanted to change. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, actually, while we were talking about this, I remember the thing that we sort of uh, came to the conclusion of, and let me know if you agree, yeah. is that we just sort of, uh, we, we like to cling to things in the past. Mm. We like to cling to things. We like to hold on to uh, maybe some unhealthy habits that we've had. Yeah. Um, maybe some unhealthy relationships that we've been in, whether that be... Uh, just family members or significant others or, or whatever, uh, we, we hold on to those. Uh, we hold on to uh, old dreams or goals that have been placed on us, whether we thought we were going to go do this, and so we're still just, we're trying to go do that, but that's not exactly where we're supposed to go. Uh, and even things that are good and not great, so something that like, Man, maybe like a like a job that's it's it's doing the job. You're doing a good thing, but that's not like that's not where the calling is. That's yeah. not where you're headed towards. That's no, not where totally. Jesus wants you to go. Hundred percent. Yeah. So, so we we cling. That's yeah. it. Hundred percent. We cling. Have you ever found yourself clinging to something that you that you have that you probably shouldn't? You know what I mean? And, and I love that conversation that you just kind of had with us. Is just this idea of good having good enough. You ever been there before? Like, oh, this situation I'm in, that my circumstances, uh, this relationship, this habit, like it's it's not that bad or it's it's good enough. You know what I mean? So like it's a place that I can live in. And so I cling to that place. And again, like Matt said, we the reason we find ourselves in the sleep or at least one big reason is because we cling to those things from the past, those relationships, those habits, because, and I think there's a few reasons actually, why, why do we cling? Um, they're comfortable. Why, 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 is the, why does this loop exist? Why is us clinging and going back, falling back to the past? Why is it so, something that happens so often? Is because the past is a comfortable place. It's known. 
Um, I don't know about you guys, but when I know something, when I know about it, how it works, I've experienced it, it feels like a safer place, right? The unknown can feel dangerous and scary because uh, we don't know how to, to handle it. We don't know how to, to walk through it and to maneuver all that it's going to bring with it. And so to, to look at the two and go, oh, should I choose the thing that's, that's known, that, that I know how to navigate and handle, or should I choose the thing that's brand new that I have no idea what it's going to end up looking like? And a lot of the times we, we kind of fall back and choose the known. We choose the comfortable because it's easier. It's familiar. It's familiar. Absolutely. Um, sometimes the newness moving forward it takes effort, right? It takes being willing to go, I don't know what this is going to look like, but I'm willing to, to put in the work to, to make this a, a known thing, to make this thing work, uh, to, to, to be able to walk through this. It takes effort on our part. And sometimes that effort is a lot and it's really, really hard and it, it can be draining. And so because of that, we go, hey, I don't, that sounds like a lot. I'd rather just kind of sit back and, and, and go back to what was known. Like, and, and we're joking about like physical fitness and, and, and diets and all these kinds of things, but those are things that take effort. Those are things that take us being able to step in and go, hey, this is going to be challenging. And so I have to be willing to go, wow, this is terrible. I'm waking up at 6 a.m. to get better at this thing. Like one, one of my things is uh, I, I, I want to get better at like just reading books, just back and forth. Just I told Matt this a few weeks ago as I started a, a book, and once I get done with it, I'm going to switch to another one. It's just – Terrible. I mean, might as well, like, I probably should stick with Dr. Seuss or something, you know, so I can run through them like, I did it! But it's, it's, it really is, but it's like, it's the challenge of going, okay, I'm going to take a moment, because I'm always moving, I'm always ready to go. It's like, to take a moment and sit and go, I'm just going to calm down, I'm going to read through this, I'm going to get through it, and not, and not have my mind wandering a thousand different ways. You know what I'm saying? There, there's a challenge to it. It's a stretching and a growing that, that's not easy. And sometimes we see the struggle, and only the struggle, when we're trying to move forward. That's all we focus on, and so it pushes us back. And we get caught in that loop because we want to get back to something. We want to be in the uncomfortable place. And so, yeah, it's, it's an easy thing, clinging, to fall back into. That's why I think we, we still have to find ourselves just in that loop, falling backwards and going, well, I wanted this, but it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. And we fall back. So why does it really matter? Okay. Why is clinging in itself going back? Why is it necessarily a bad thing? Because like you said, Matt, um, like some of the things that we cling to aren't necessarily bad. You know what I mean? Maybe we're in a relationship that's like, it's got its stuff, uh, and, it, and, and it can have some improvement in a lot of different ways, but it's not that bad. It's, it's, it's a good enough relationship. We like each other enough. You know, it's like, that's, that's a thing. Uh, we think that, um, but really, when we cling, there's a lot of other dangers that we might not see until it's potentially too late. There's other things in the background that can be happening that are actually hurting us um, that we might not be seeing in that season. Uh, like so, some of these examples is when, when we cling, one thing we, we're doing is we're limiting ourselves. We're putting up boundaries for ourselves that maybe God didn't intend for us to have in our lives. We're, like again, the good enough conversation where we're saying, oh, I, I, this, is, this is great. This is good enough. And God's saying, but no, I've, I've actually called you all the way out here. Does that make sense? And so we're saying, oh, I'm, I'm I, this is good. I'm not, I'm not in a place of sin. I'm not in a place of brokenness. Like, but, but maybe God has more. And, and, and again, that kind of falls back on our human perspective, our own perspective, thinking we know what's best. We know what's right. And so when we cling, uh, we're limiting ourselves. The, the loop matters because God may have more, and we're missing it because we're the ones who are deciding what's seen and what's best. Uh, another thing that clinging does is it, it drives fear. Like I talked about a, little, a, a second ago is uh, when you – when you cling on to comfortability long enough, uh, th- or the longer you do that, the more scary the unknown becomes. Sure. Yeah, you, know, you know what I'm talking about? It's like you, if, if you've sat in a place of, I know how this works, and I've done this, and I'm kind of comfortable here too long, then when an opportunity comes up to grow, it, be, it looks like the biggest challenge in the world. And it, like, there, there's going to be zero desire to even attempt to get at that because we've been in this space, this comfortable known space for so long. And that just makes it, it just makes it more of a challenge to be willing to go, I'm going to take this first step and trust God to move forward. Um, it, so again, it limits me, it drives fear. And then the, the, another thing that it does is it causes us to place uh, our trust and our, our, our belief in, in the wrong things, in the wrong places. And, w- and what I mean by that is ultimately what we're supposed to do, what we're called to do as followers of Jesus is to place our trust in him. We're called to go, hey, God, I don't know what this is going to look like tomorrow. I don't know how this is going to turn out, but I know you've got me. I know that you're going to take care of me no matter what, right? But when we decide to cling or when, when we allow the clinging to happen, when we allow comfortable to be the, the choice that we want, what we're really doing is putting our trust in ourselves. What we're ultimately doing is saying, uh, I, 
I, I like what I know and what I'm capable of and what I, what I myself can handle. And so I'm going to stick right here. I'm going to trust what I know. Uh, and, and, and we're taking the opportunity to trust God, the trust that God deserves and, and should be his and placing it in ourselves and in our own in, in our circumstances, which ultimately we know, guys, and the danger again is that these things will fail us. We as human beings are incapable uh, of achieving and moving forward in the way that God has called us to, um, and that's why we loop. That's that's why we get stuck in these places. So ultimately what clinging does is it keeps us from trusting God the way that we're supposed to. It keeps us um, from uh, experiencing and achieving the things that God wants for us because God does have big plans for us in our lives. God wants to. Every single year we jump to newness and God does have plans. God may never change, but he wants our lives to change for the better every second of every day. He wants to see us move forward constantly. That's his heart's desire for us because he loves us so much. It holds us back from becoming the person clinging, holds us back from becoming the person that God has created us to be. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And that was uh, exactly it. Like whenever we were studying through this, whenever we were trying to figure out exactly what we were going to talk about, we kept coming back to this verse in Philippians. Uh, So we're going to be in Philippians 3 if you want to get there. Uh, But before we read it, it is just this idea of pressing on. Can I have you say press on? Press on. Yeah, press on. Let's say it one more time. Press on. Yeah. So Philippians 3, I'm going to read it right now. It says this. Great job, church. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Man, so I love Philippians. Philippians is one of my favorite books. Uh, actually, one of my professors, he I, I want to give a little bit of context about this. Uh, one of my professors said that the book of Philippians uh, was Paul telling the Philippian church, hey, this is a call to cruciformity. What that means is you should be living a cross-shaped life. You should be living a life shaped like Jesus. You should be living your life after what he has done. Uh, so it's, it's this idea of, I mean, Paul is in chains while he's writing this, yeah. and he's, he's giving them this encouragement, and he's saying, no, 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 keep doing this, but also, like, live your life like this. Live your life cross-shaped. Uh, and so we look, and even in this section right here, like we see in uh, uh, chapter 2 where it's Christ's example of humility, super good piece of scripture right there if you haven't read it. Uh, but then we get to where, where he's talking in chapter 3, and he's talking about how uh, he's saying, look out for the dogs, look out for the evildoers and all these people. Uh, but then he starts talking about how he has confidence in the flesh. He has confidence about uh, of himself. Yeah. And then he's saying, no, 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 but that's the old me. Like, I'm taking all of these things, and I I, I have to put them behind me. I have to count them all as rubbish. They are garbage. They they aren't it. That's not it. And then he gets to this point in uh, verses 9 and 10 uh, where he's saying, uh, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from Christ that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. This is the goal. Yeah. This is what he's aiming toward, towards. He's aiming towards the resurrection of of Jesus just like Jesus. He wants to be with him. That's what he's going towards. Uh, And it's awesome. It's this idea of pressing on. I really like Paul because he talks a lot about, like, he uses a lot of analogies uh, using athleticism. So, like, he's talking about a race here. I'm I'm putting it behind me, and I'm running forward. I'm pressing forward. Uh, It's a good thing we're athletes so we can understand this scripture. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Yeah, here we are. (laughs) Uh, But the thing about it is that we're not pressing on just for the sake of pressing on. Uh, Verse 14, we reread that, and it says, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, 
is calling us. Yeah. No, super we press good. on because God has called us to. Amen. It's part of our, our lives as Christians. It's part of the transformation process that we are going through as we're putting the old behind and we're pressing on towards what he wants for us. Amen. Super good. So that's that, And that's, that's really it. Like Matt just said, ultimately we, we press on not just for pressing on sake, right? We don't just move forward to say, I did it. You know what I mean? Woo! It's like, that's cool. But it's like, ultimately, there's, God has more for us in that. God's heart is not just that we would move forward so that we could say, I'm a better person now. I, I've changed. Things are they're good. Yes, God's desire in his heart for his, for his kiddos is he wants to see us better. He wants to see us improve. He wants to see health in our lives. But he has more for us. And, and, and like Matt said, what that looks like is it's us changing the goal or, or actually better way to say it is seeing the true goal God's true purpose behind pressing on again not just for our own betterment because when we decide that the, the goal is to move forward and, and, and just to press on so that we can say we did it or just so we can become better we're putting the the weight on our shoulders that we have to carry that to to, to achieve that and also once it's achieved we're the expectation is we're going to give ourselves the glory because, oh, I pressed on, I changed, I did better. And that's not God's heart for us. That's not his plan for us at all. Uh, somebody who reveals the truth behind this and shows us what the goal actually is, uh, is Jesus, right? Jesus is perfect, and he perfectly shows us what it looks like um, to achieve this goal of saying, hey, God, I want what you have. I want your will done in my life and not what I want, not, not what I might be able to achieve myself. Uh, so there's, there's quite a few moments where we see this happen, um, and what I think uh, we can see in what Jesus reveals to us, a couple of things is, one, uh, Jesus reveals that, hey, we're, we're called to be obedient to our Heavenly Father, that God will place moments in life throughout our entire lives consistently where we just have to respond in obedience, where we have to trust and go, okay, God, like, I, I don't understand this completely, but if you say so, Father, then so be it. You know what I mean? We, we, we have to obey. And the second thing uh, is that God will call us to things not just because he can, like ultimately he absolutely can, right, because he is sovereign over all, but God does this because he loves us and he has what's best for us. Again, it's God's heart for his kids. It's God's heart for his people is he wants to see good things happen in our lives. And Jesus recognizes this and he teaches us this and how he responds while he's here on earth um, amongst his people, amongst the disciples, his response to what the Father has called him to. So a few examples. Actually, first, uh, Hebrews 12, 2. It says this, it says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him. Right there, because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. So again, Jesus understood that the goal was not just to press on for, for pressing on sake uh, or just to better himself, but there was a joy set before him. There's a joy that awaited him, and the way that that joy was achieved was through obedience to the Father, was, was through saying, I'm going to choose God's way over my own, God's will over my own, because when we choose God's will, just like Jesus did, he honored and glorified the Father, and that is what brought him the joy. That was the joy that awaited him, was the moment of God's glory, God's name being lifted high and shared throughout the world, and so Jesus does this. We see this where, where he, he brings the Father joy, um, and, and the Father is pleased with him in a few places. Um, when Jesus is baptized, right, he's baptized, and God responds, this is my son whom I love. With him, I am well please a moment of obedience between father and son and immediately god goes hey well done well done you you've accomplished a goal that what i had set before you the, the, the plan i had set before you in this moment another place we see it is jesus praying in the garden of gethsemane we know this moment the night he's arrested right jesus is is, is praying and he's talking to the father we the, the scripture talks about him sweating blood because of what he was experiencing the stress he was going through just unimaginable right and so he he has a very real human and beautiful moment with his father and he says hey god if there's a way you can take this away can can you change this plan that's set before me because if so It'd be really cool. You know what I mean? Like, I, I would love to not have to go through it this way. However, Father, if this is your plan, so be it. Your will be done, not mine. And so Jesus teaches us again in this moment, like, hey, I've got to obey and trust my heavenly Father here. I've got to believe that his way, even though what, what I can see, again, that's, this is just the, the visualizing through human minds, we're limited to what we can actually see the Father might be doing. We, we don't know all that he is doing in the background, what, what beautiful thing he is trying to make happen. And so because of that, we have to be understanding and go, hey, God, I, 
I'm going to trust that you've got me. I'm going to trust that what you're about to do is the absolute way. You know, you know the, the, the moment uh, in, uh, in Avengers Endgame, you know, when you've got like, uh, <laughs> you've got Dr. Strange and Tony Stark is like about to make the ultimate sacrifice snap and he, Dr. Strange looks at him and does like the finger. They're like, well, there's only one way this is going to work out. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we've got to have that trust with God too where it's like, God's like, hey, this, like you may not know exactly what it's going to look like, but know that there's this one way and I need you just to trust me in this. And we've got to go, okay. I'm terrified and this is hard, but if I know you're with me, then I'll be able to do this. I can move forward. So again, your will, not mine. And then another moment is during Jesus' transfiguration. Really cool moment. If you haven't read through that, it's like his his face shone like the sun is what the scripture says. Just this really beautiful moment of, of the glory of the son of the Messiah just pouring out in front of his people right there. Um, but again, after this moment when Jesus does this, he, he, he shows his obedience to God. And God responds in the cloud above and says, this is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. So what Jesus reveals to us is, again, the goal is not, hey, I, I did it. I, I, I'm better now. I've, I've grown. I've changed for the better. It's no. The, the, the goal is the joy that waits before me, which is my heavenly father coming up to me and going, great job. I'm so proud of you. Well done and giving God the glory, trusting God and, and saying, God, your way, not mine. And in those moments, he comes in and says, hey, I'm so pleased with you. That's the joy that was before Jesus. That's what Jesus was working towards. That's what he wanted. That's what kept him moving forward was the glory, the, the opportunity to glorify the Father and to trust him. And so that, that, that is what Jesus reveals to us. How, how, do we, how do we get out of this loop? You know what I mean? How, how do we break free from that? It's, it's not about ourselves. It's not about putting the weight on us and the, the expectation on our own shoulders and, and, and choosing our own plans and desires. It's recognizing that we don't always get it right, but we have a heavenly Father who has it right always, and who we can trust, and not only that, who, but who wants to help us through this entire process of moving forward, who's, who, who will never leave our sides, never abandon us, and who will make a way every single time so that we can stop this loop, so we can break free of this cycle and actually keep moving forward and stop clinging. Yeah. So how do we move forward, though? How, well, what steps can we take to actually move forward from this clinging, from this, this idea of, of uh, putting these yeah. things behind us and then pressing on towards the goal? Uh, man, it's not easy. It's not easy. That's the thing. Yeah. Is that this is not an easy process. It's not an easy thing to have to go through. It's not easy uh, to trust God in his way completely. Uh, because sometimes God has scary things for us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, it's tough to, to stop choosing the comfortable because we're so used to it. It's so familiar to us, and, and we just want to keep going back to it. Um, and it's not easy to stop seeking what's, what's known. Um, we, we know it. We've been there. We, we have that. We, we've had that time yeah. spent there, the experience. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, and so it's so much easier to just stay there. Uh, so some 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 practical steps, if you would, um, to uh, that we can take as we learn to trust God more uh, and move forward and to stop clinging. Uh, first one is just knowing that this is a process. Um, knowing that this is a process, uh, it, it is a transformation, it is going to take time. It's going to take time, it's going to take some patience. Uh, a, a guy like Pastor Brian Loritz, he preaches a sermon and he talks about how in the kitchen of the kingdom, there are no microwaves, only crock pots. <laughs> so it's, it's slow cooking, right? It, it's not this instantaneous minute and a half, I'm ready to go eat my Hot Pocket, you know? You know, hot pockets are nice. You know, hot pockets right. are nice, but it's besides the point. But the roast is better. But you know the what I'm roast saying? is probably going to be better for you in the long run. Hey, man. Maybe. Oh, we're preaching now. Y'all better know. come on. I'm saying. Going crazy out here. Lunches. Crockpot. Not here. Message. <laughs> Crockpot yeah. message. That's a translation. <laughs> Crockpot. Never mind. Let's keep going. But it takes patience, right? Like, you, you stick it on low for eight hours, and it's like you can't just, can't just call it good and go for it. But in the end, it's like, it's amazing. Absolutely. Right, by trusting the process. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 actually says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. I really like where it says new creation. It's this, this word that I love a lot, but it, 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 it's this idea of taking something and uh, making it in the way that you want it. And it's not, not, 
It's just Jesus taking us and making us the way he wants us. And it, that's part of this transformation. It's part of this process. Uh, it, it's like a, like a roll of film. Uh, a lot of you have used film cameras. They're not super common anymore, but it's like, no, you take your roll of film once you take all your pictures and you take it to Walmart or wherever and they send it off to get it developed and in the development process there's this this dark room and they take the thing and they do the thing and I don't know how the process works. There's a lot the of stuff going steps, on. thousand steps, okay? They do the thing and then the next thing and I'm the other I'm just saying, thing. it takes like three weeks. Yeah, man. And then they call you up and they're like, hey, we got your pictures. We did like, the things. Sick. <laughs> we, we did the things and it, it took time. It took patience, and it was a process. Oh, totally. It makes me think. Uh, so, it makes me think of endurance, right? We 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 read all throughout Scripture that that God is calling us to to grow, to to grow in our endurance, in our ability to keep pressing on, to keep moving forward. James uh, one is a great example in verses two through four. It says, "Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy, for uh, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance." to grow. So let it grow. Let it grow. We're to Elsa, right? Come on. Let it grow. Uh, for when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing, right? And we read that, and uh, I don't know about you guys, but the, the first thing you get caught on is when it talks about uh, when troubles of any kind come your way, uh, you should be happy about it. Fine. It's this great joy, and you're like, that, that, those are two opposite things. Doesn't make sense. But it's, it's stepping back and seeing the bigger picture of when I recognize, when, that, that's a huge step. When I'm able to recognize, and not only recognize, but, uh, but be okay with the fact that uh, this life and me becoming the person that God has called me to be is going to take some time, I've taken a huge step in the right direction. When I'm able to go, hey, this is not going to happen overnight, that I'm being sanctified, that, I, that I'm going to have to trust God over and over and over and over again, I am well on my way into what God has called me to do and in the direction he's calling me to go. Because I, I, I'm understanding God is moving. God is moving. I may not see every moment. I may not see the whole picture or what the end game is, uh, but I know that he is for me, and I know that he's going to keep growing me and changing me for the better. So I've got to let him continue. There's other parts of Scripture that says, let God continue the work that he has begun in you, right? God has started a work in us. God created us on purpose. He didn't just create us and go, all right, let's see, let's see what they do there. Roll over. You know what I mean? Like do something. It's like, no, no, no. He's like, hey, I've got plans. I've got purpose. I created you. And you're this masterpiece that I would love to see come to this beautiful fruition, to come to completion um, in a way that only he can make it happen, right? Again, he gives us our free will. He gives us our choice, but he's, he's got plans. He's got a purpose. And so one of the things that we have to do through this process is just kind of step out of the way. Uh, a word to carry Underwood, right? Right? Like uh, Jesus, take the wheel. For real. It's like, take the wheel, God. You drive in the direction you want to go. I want to become the masterpiece that you have called me to be. But to do that, I've just got to trust that this is a process. And I got to trust that this is going to take time and I'll be all right through it all. That it will turn out to be the ex absolute best thing for me. So, the next thing, okay, so the first one is know it's a process, and the next thing is to know that God will provide through this process. God is the great provider. Matthew 6, 31 through 33 says, so don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, okay? I thought about, what will I wear this morning? It's okay. We'll get through it, right? Um, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So we see ultimately, like right away, God's like, hey, don't worry about the things that are stressing you out. Don't, don't, don't worry about the things that you have to figure out. There's wisdom in planning and trying to figure that stuff out, but don't, don't be so concerned that you miss what's happening right here. Don't be so concerned with tomorrow. Don't be con so concerned with how these things are going to happen that you miss out on what he's trying to do right here, right now. Does that make sense, church? God is moving right here, right now, so we don't want to miss out on that. And ultimately what I think God is trying to do is he's trying to reveal his character to us, right? As a provider saying, hey, I've got you, okay? In this process that I'm asking you to walk out with me, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to make sure that you have everything you need. It may not be what you think you need or what you desire, but it will absolutely be what you need to keep moving forward. That is a promise that I will that he will not let go of. It is a promise that he will make sure happens. And so it's it's just a big deal to know that God will provide through this. I think it's a it's a huge step of of, of trusting him and understanding that we can get through this. It's gonna help us in the way. And then the other kind of side note to that is it's again back to God's character is knowing that God is good. That that is who he is. Romans eight twenty eight says, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. 
God is good and his plans for us are good. So when we can know that and we can cling to that instead of, of, of the fear and of the other things, of, of the comfortability, God, oh, you can't, we can't even imagine what God's going to do in our lives. Because we're like, oh, hey, I, I don't know how this is going to happen. I don't know what's next, but man, God's good. Have you, have you been in that place before? If you haven't experienced that place before, that is a beautiful place to be in as a follower of Jesus. To know, man, even if everything turns out wrong, a bill comes up unexpectedly. My marriage begins to crumble. Uh, my, my relationship with somebody else goes bad. I lose my job. I just, whatever the world, the enemy, whatever life just wants to throw my way, if I can sit and say, but God is so good, and I know that that is who he is to the core, then I can keep moving forward. Then I don't have to be trapped in the loop. Because he is so good and he's got my back. He loves me so much and he will provide. Yeah. So we know it's a process. We know that God will provide because he is a good God. Yeah. And the third thing is that you can know that you are not alone Amen. in this process. Yep. We see these people in this room, uh, the people online. There, There is a community out there for you. Uh, Galatians 6, 2 through 3 says... Share each other's burdens, and in this way, obey the law of Christ. If you think you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. Boom! Got him. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you are not alone. There are people who are willing to be a part of this process with you, this transformation with you. Uh, we want to see each other succeed. We want to. We want others, the the people around us. We want what God has for them, and, and we should be encouraging one another in that, uh, and, and sharing our burdens with them, so that they can encourage us to be the way that Jesus wants us to be. So, so find accountability from those who love you and want to see the Lord's will done in your life. Amen. Yeah, and I'd say this too. I think uh, like in, in that last part of Galatians right there, knowing that we're not alone, uh, he says, if you think you are too important to help someone, you're only fooling yourself. I'd say the, the, the flip side to that I equation is also true is that if you think you are either uh, uh, unimportant, you're, you're not important enough to be helped, you're also fooling yourself. Uh, and, and again, I, I know that that comes with insecurity and that comes with shame or doubt about yourself. And the first thing you need to know is that you are loved beyond any measure that, that, that we could ever understand. Like that God's love for you is so great. And not only his love, but people around you love you. You just might not see it right now, but you are absolutely loved. And the flip side to that, while we may think like, like it, it is a hard place to be in, we're still just putting the, the attention on ourselves. We're still, we're still thinking like right here, like the weight is on my shoulders. It's, it's my job to get better. It's my job to change. You've got to release those. You are too important to Jesus. You are too important to sit there in that spot and, and, and to not receive the help that you need. We need each other. God created, God moves through his people. I can't tell you how many times, and I think this is a huge way. I'm, I'm, a, ve I'm a people person. I'm an extrovert. I love talking to people and hanging out with people. And so, I mean, I believe that that's one of the biggest ways that God is, he's, moved and talked to me in my life. I believe God has brought people into my life who go, hey, whether that's me trying to move forward, maybe I'm stuck in a loop. I've had people come in and go, that's not what God wants for you. And, and I totally believe that was the Lord speaking through them to me because God wanted to do something different in my life. God wanted to see me press on. God wanted to see me get out of that broken loop and cycle that I was in. God speaks through his people. God loves through his people. It's, it's, it's amazing to see it happen. And so maybe you don't have that right now. Maybe you need somebody who can come in and speak life into your marriage. Maybe you have somebody who can come in and speak life into your soul and say, hey, you're important, like we're saying today. Maybe you need somebody to come in and to, to, to help just give you wisdom on what's next in your life, whatever that may look like. We need those people around us. We need to find that accountability, like Matt's saying, so that we can understand we're not alone, that God has called us to walk this out together, that pressing on is a, is a family matter. And that we've got to team up and keep, keep moving forward and let Jesus work in all of us so that we, we can keep going. So, you know, uh, as we get ready to close out uh, and as we get ready to jump into this next year, I think ultimately the thing we, we've got to see is that this is a challenge for us. The challenge is to, to, to take a look at the areas of our life and, uh, where we see ourselves looping. To take, take a look at our life and see where we're clinging, where, where we're choosing comfortability, where we're choosing known over growth where we're choosing uh, easy and, and what feels safe over what might be a challenge, but in the long run will make a difference, what will, will be better for us. And we've got to give those places to God. We've got to invite God and say, God, your way over mine, your will be done. Because in the long run, the goal should not be I've become better. The goal should be I want to hear my heavenly father say, well done. 
well done. I am so pleased with you, and I love you so much. That is the goal. That is what makes the difference in the loop. That's what breaks the cycle and helps us move forward. So this next year, 2022, I believe God's got big plans for every single person in this room. I believe God wants to do good things in everybody's life in this room and in everybody in this world, but we've got to give him the chance. We've got to learn to trust him. We've got to invite him in and say, your way, Jesus, because I just want him to tell me, well done. I'm so pleased with you. I want to glorify him in his name. Can we pray, church? Yeah. Pray. If you'll stand with me, we'll yeah. pray. Jesus, we come before you today, and we are thankful that you are here. We are thankful for who you are and for what you've done. Lord, we just we, we, we praise you in this moment. Jesus, we, we ask that you, you would work through us, that you would help us through this transformation process, that, man, just that your will would be done through our lives, and that, that we would be able to put those things behind us and press on towards the, the goal that you have for us. Lord, we love you. We thank you for loving us. Amen.